it's stuck there sits in the back. The student holds the controls nice and lightly so that the instructor can actually fly the airplane. Does that make sense? But the student gets to feel what it's like to fly the airplane. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then when we get to the end of the course, so when we get to the stage where we're doing things like we saw in the video inside, the instructor sits in the back like this. Yeah? If anthem's going wrong or if the instructor sees something they don't like, well they can grab on the controls. Yeah? Talking to the guy in the front lines, yeah? This is the student's in the front. So have a look at what happens when I move the instructor's control column. You see the student's control column moves with it. Yeah? Now if you want to grab, what's your name? Oshin, if you want to grab the student's control column, and you can have a look in the rear here and have a look at what happens to the instructor's control. And it makes all of the same movements that Oshin is making up front. All right? If you have a look at what effect that movement is going to have, so let's have a look at the tail of the airplane. So all the way down the back of the tail of the airplane. So watch for the movable surface. You see that great air moving? Yeah. And the best way of visualizing an aircraft is think of it as if it's submerged in water. Obviously, obviously not a good situation for an airplane, yeah? But the effect that the movement of the surface is going to have is the same. So if you're in water and we move that surface in that direction, what's it going to do for the tail of the airplane? It's going to, so if I, we're going through water and I put my hand up like that, what's going to happen to my hand? My hand's going to go down, isn't it? So, okay, here's a better one. Driving down the motorway, yeah? And you put your hand out the window like that, what's going to happen? It's going to go down, isn't it? Yeah? So if I do this at the back, it's going to push the tail of the airplane down. What's that going to do for the nose of the airplane? It's going to bring the nose of the airplane up, isn't it? Yeah? The same thing then if we go to the left-hand side. So let's say we go left. So have a look out on the left-hand side of the wing. So again, what's it going to do for that? Put your hand at the window of the car. Do that, it's going to push that down, isn't it? Yeah? Have a look out the right. So put your hand out the window of the car like this. Which way is your hand going to go? Oh, no. so like this? It's going to go up, isn't it? Yeah? So if I move the control car to the left-hand side, that guy is going to come up. The left one is going to go down. And which way is the airplane turning now? It's turning left. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. This is the ejection seat here. Martin Baker CH11 ejection seat. Built in Belfast. Right. So it's an Irish bit of kit. And one in the front and one in the back. And we've got a, a unique system on this airplane. Right. It's called a command ejection system. So if the instructor in the rear pulls his ejection handle, both seats will exit the airplane. Right. If the student pulls his handle, only the student's seat will exit the airplane. Right. See the little orange handle in front? And that's the ejection handle. A little red pin that's in front of the seat. So this guy here, look there. That's the safety pin. So once that's in, you can't pull the handle basically. It's just a bit of metal. It stops the handle coming out. All right? When you pull the handle, you set off a series of explosions. And those explosions take place through cartridges here in the back of the seat. The seat moves up along the rails, and using these breakers here, breaks its way, breaks through the canopy. All right? So seat moves at a really, really high acceleration, about 45 to 46 G. Right? So it's huge. If you think about what's 1 G? What's acceleration due to gravity? 9.81, isn't it? Yeah, remember that number? So we're moving at 46 of those. So 46 by 9.81. It's about 400. All right? About 400 meters per second per second squared. This guy accelerates. Yeah? So we have a really, really large force coming from the seat, and it acts over this tiny little area here. So we've got a really high pressure, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. So that high pressure breaks its way through the canopy, and very, very quickly, it's just you and the seat, and you're way out of the airplane. No, right? the, seat go away the seat goes with you initially, yeah. and then it falls away when you're underneath the canopy. And it just collects turn. All right. The machine gun has a recoil, all right, which means it follows Newton's third law. All right. So if you fire around this way, there's a push on the wing back in that direction. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't matter. If both machine guns are firing, does that make sense? So if they're both firing, then both wings are being pushed back. Now the airplane's going to slow down, but it's not going to turn. Yeah? So if we've got just one gun firing, let's say we've got one gun firing, and you're looking straight at the target. When you fire the gun, are you going to be looking straight at the target? No, you're not, because you're going to be, in this case, let's say this gun is firing, you're going to start going to the left, aren't you? The nose suspension. Exactly, yeah. What we're talking about there is talking about a turning moment. Have you guys heard of turning moments? Yeah. yeah did you cover that? Like why why is the uh, the handle on your on your door? Yeah, why is it as far away as possible from the hinge? Yeah. Because you're gonna need a lower force to open the door, aren't you? If the distance is large. Does that make sense? Here's another another idea. I showed you all how the airplane turns, yeah? So I move the control column left and move the control column right. 
and you saw the aileron moving up and down. Yeah? So that little flap there, so if you want to very gently just move it up and down, just very, very gently, you know? Yeah, so that guy there, we all saw him? Yeah? Why are they all the way out here at the edge of the wings? Why aren't they in here in close? Because there's more leverage, yeah? The center of gravity is in here of the airplane, yeah? If they're close to the center of gravity, yeah? Then the aircraft won't turn as much. If they're out towards the edge of the wing, and you apply a force, you apply that force through a larger distance, so the airplane is gonna turn more. Same thing with pitch, yeah? So we pull back on the control coil and we saw how the nose of the airplane will go down. That's why it's all the way down here at the back, yeah? So that's why it's as far as possible from the center of gravity, so that when you move with the force that it applies, acts through a large distance. Therefore, the effect of that force is greater. Yeah? So the exact same concept as to why the door handle is as far as possible from the engine. All happy with that? Okay, cool. Will we go and have a look at the simulator? Okay, so have a look on the screen outside. You see the heads on display, that's that like green dial, and I'm looking at it in front of me, yeah? Is there information there? On the left hand side, I've got the speed of the airplane, 190 knots, yeah? On the right hand side, I've got the altitude of the airplane, just about 1,000 feet or so, 1,070 feet. All right. Let's have a look at transfer of some of that kinetic energy into the pitch lens. So have a look at the airspeed. It's coming back, 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 back. 150, 140. Look at the altitude. 3,000 feet. Yeah. Over the top. About three and a half, four thousand feet. All right. So they're all of our kinetic energy has been transferred into potential energy, which is the altitude of the air. 